Hello everyone, here's another Physics 30 example set. This is from Unit 6, which is Nuclear Theory. And this is Lesson 2, which is about all the different types of decay reactions. So we should be familiar with our uh, nuclear annotations by now. And uh, we're going to take a look here at a particular scenario. So here's example, one of the first examples. Um, we're dealing with a parent nucleus at rest um, undergoing an alpha decay. So currently we don't know what the parent nucleus is. We're told that the daughter nucleus is Franzium-223 and there's the atomic mass. Uh, an alpha particle is emitted with a certain velocity. So first up, part A, we need to identify the parent nucleus, stating the physics principles as we go. So let's take a look at this reaction. Um, it's going to give us, as the example has stated, it's going to give us Franzium 2, 2, 3. And if we use our periodic table, we'll see there are 87, or the atomic number is 87, which means there's 87 protons in Franzium. And it's going to give us an alpha particle. That's all we know so far. So there's my alpha particle. I do know that the alpha particle has a velocity. Okay, so there's a velocity of 5.8 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. But I don't think I'm going to need that for now because all I'm doing is finding out the parent nucleus. Okay, well, we're going to use some conservation laws. First of all, we're going to take care of this top number, the nucleon number. This is the total number of protons and neutrons in the element or in the isotope. And so 223 in Franzium, but we also have to keep track of the four that are in the alpha. So there's a total number of nucleons. So let's write that down here. Number of nucleons on this side of the equation, on the product side of the equation, is 223 plus 4. So obviously to, oops, 227. And that's going to be a combination of protons and neutrons. Okay, over on this side of the equation, this must stay the same. This is a conservation law. So conservation of nucleons is actually our physics principle. Here they are from the data sheet. It's our physics principle number eight. Take a look. There it is. Conservation of nucleons. That's a conservation law from our data sheet. We must obey it. And so that implies then, or it forces us to, the, to say that on the, on, the, on the reactant side, if you like, of the equation, the number of nucleons must be the same. So 227. And then I can go and look at my other number here which is my atomic number which is 87 for franzium and then if you look here we've got the two for the alpha particle so my atomic number is 87 plus 2 so 89 and that also must be conserved what which which uh, conservation law is it well, the atomic number, these are, um, these are protons. Okay, so they're all charged. Each proton is one elementary charge. And so if I have 87 plus 2, if I have an atomic number, a total atomic number of 89, that means I have 89 elementary charges. Remember that an elementary charge is 1 decimal 6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So if I multiply that, that amount of charged by 89, that must be also conserved. And so if we look at our conservation of, um, or our physics principles, our conservation laws, our number seven is conservation of charge. So for the nucleon number, the 223 plus four, that's conserved to, make us, to give us the 227, the initial number. That is a physics principle Eight. Let's put that in here. So uh, physics principle eight. And now I'm looking at physics principle. So this is for the atomic number. This is going to be 
physics principle seven. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that in. Um, this is my atomic number here, 89. And so now I, all I have to do is use my periodic table, look up the element that's in atomic number 89, and it's actinium. There it is. So um, at the beginning, I put this velocity here. Uh, we don't need this velocity to solve for part A, but I have a sneaking suspicion that coming up, um, we're going to be looking at some momentum uh, because we have this velocity, and we're told that the parent was at rest. So we're going to start treating this like kind of like an explosion, like a bomb. And we can work out the velocities of, uh, of the other part of the bomb. Um, otherwise, we've answered the question. We've identified the parent nucleus. Here it is, actinium-227. And we can state the physics principles uh, from our physics 30 data sheet. We're saying it's physics principle 8, which is conservation of nucleons and physics principle seven, which is the conservation of charge. Okay, so for part B, sure enough, here it is. We're working out the recoil velocity. Uh, we predicted that given that we were told the, the, we were told the recoil velocity of an alpha particle. So it's only natural then we, we would be asked to find out the recoil velocity of the other part of the explosion, if you like. So let's go ahead and just uh, sort of schematically draw this. I'm going to say that before this explosion, and when I say explosion, what I really mean is a nuclear decay. Um, so before the, the explosion, there was quite simply, and we'd worked this out in the previous question, we, all we had was an atom of actinium-227 right here just sat there at rest, okay, not moving. It's an assumption. Um, obviously, when we consider uh, kinetic theory or even quantum mechanics, we talk about, or we can, we can make some assumptions about the, these uh, atoms moving around. But let's go ahead and assume that it's at rest. <clears throat> and so before, it's just sat there like this, and we would, go and we would go and write some statements. We would say, it's got a mass, it's got a velocity, and therefore it has a momentum. Of course, afterwards, what's going to happen is, and this would be after the nuclear decay, which we're going to consider to be an explosion. Afterwards, we're going to have a piece of this flying off in one direction, and another piece of this flying off in the exact opposite direction. I don't think we can talk about anything else. Um, and so from the previous example, we figured out that, or we actually we were told in the question that we had uh, Franzium-223, just put that in here, that's 87, and an alpha-42. Okay, so those are given to us there. And we were told the velocity of the alpha, so we could go ahead and once again we could put in the mass, the velocity and the momentum of each of these pieces. And so the alpha particle would have the alpha particle mass, the velocity that's given, which means it would have a certain momentum. And what we're trying to find here, the question is asking for what is the recoil velocity? In other words, the velocity of this daughter nucleus, this daughter material, the franzium piece that's flying away. Okay, so just to recap from our previous example here, this is the decay reaction. One thing we haven't added on here, and it's probably insignificant, but I'm going to do it just to be, just to be particular, is the uh, addition of a gamma. Highly likely, um, whenever there's a um, an alpha or beta, it's quite often that the the uh, the nucleus is uh, will transition from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, and that will that will lead to a gamma photon. So I'm just going to put that on here as well, uh, but we're going to just ignore that. So just just add it on. Okay. Uh, other things we know. Well, we're told the velocity. So I'm going to put this underneath the velocity of the alpha particle. Actually, let's just put that as um, I'll go. Velocity of the alpha is. 5 decimal 8 times 10 to the 6. So that's that's a known. 5 decimal 8 times 10 to the 6. That's, that's a known value. 
And of course we have the mass of the franzium. So I'm gonna put that in here as well. Two, three, three, decimal, zero, one, nine, seven, U. Okay, now principles that we need to use here, uh, conservation of momentum clearly, we can think about this as a linear system. Um, I've just arbitrarily chosen the direction, but because it's essentially a linear system, whatever direction one of them goes in, the other one is going to go in the complete opposite direction. So I, I could have picked any direction. So our conservation of momentum statement will be, of course, that the total momentum in, in this linear system will equal the total momentum after the linear system. So whatever this value is here will have to equal these values combined here. Okay, well, hopefully you can see pretty obvious because this is at rest, which we're told in the question, the momentum of the uh, parent nuclei is zero kilogram meters per second. Okay, so these momentums of the daughters, the franzium and the alpha, are going to be equal and opposite. Okay, so let's flesh out our momentum statement. We're going to say we've got zero momentum on the initial side, on the before side, and then the after momentum is going to be the momentum of franzium plus the momentum of the alpha. Okay, in other words, these momentums are equal. Okay, so now we can we can expand that even slightly more and just say that, of course, momentum is mv, so the mass of the franzium multiplied by the velocity of the franzium is going to be equal to the mass of the alpha multiplied by the velocity of the alpha. Okay, which ones do we know? Well, we know the mass of an alpha, that's give, as a given value on our data sheet. We know the velocity, that's given to us in the question. We also know the mass of the franzium. It's given to us in our, in our question, but it's in the atomic mass units so we're gonna to have to convert. But ultimately, we are solving for this velocity. So the velocity of the franzium is going to be the mass of the alpha times the velocity of the alpha divided by the mass of the franzium. So let's put those values in. So give me some space down here. Let's see. The velocity of the franzium is going to be mass of the alpha. Well, that's 6.65 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Multiplied by the velocity, well, that's a given value, 5 decimal 8 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Of course, divided by the mass of franzium, and that's where we do need to do our conversion, because we've been given the value, 223 decimal 0197u, and I'm going to multiply this out using my... Um, dimensional analysis. So there's my u on the bottom. So 1u is equal to 1 decimal 66 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Okay. So the u's cancel, the kilograms cancels, and we're left with meters per second. So we're pretty happy with that. And now I just have to plug that into my calculator and I'm going to get 1 decimal 0 0.04 times 10 to the 5 and that's meters per second and if I needed to dis define that direction it's going to be in the opposite direction to the alpha particle. Okay we're into the last part of this question um, which gets to the mass defect that is to say the missing mass, the change in mass. So let's just visualize this, because uh, this can be sort of a weird concept to grasp. So let's just visualize what we start with. We have the actinium, and it changes, okay, to franzium and an alpha particle, both of which are 
moving. So there's movement, it's flying away this way, it's flying away that way at the velocities that we just calculated. So let's make some statements about what we know. Well, this is at rest and this is moving. Okay, and we know that when something's at rest, we can say that it has zero kinetic energy. Okay, so at rest here, we're gonna say therefore, the energy associated with this resting state is all about the mass, okay? It's 100% mass. If I was to de describe where the energy was, it's all in the mass. And we could get particular and say that there's, there's the strong force holding it together, but we're gonna ignore that for now. We're just gonna say there's mass. Okay, now we talk about it moving, which means it's gonna have a velocity now. So the, the daughter material is moving. So there's obviously gonna be mass in the actual um, isotopes, but they're also moving. So now we have to say that, so we're gonna say uh, consequently, well therefore, the energy is mass and EK, kinetic energy, okay? So a couple of assumptions, let's go ahead and state those, because of course physics is all about assumptions. So we're gonna assume, um, we're gonna assume that there are no um, there are no gammas, so no gammas. That's not a very good gamma sign, so I'll just write it. No gammas, and there's no heat. So we're not going to talk about heat energy coming from this because heat essentially is EK. Heat is EK. <laughs> Uh, and Boltzmann taught us that. If you're IB, you'll know that three, two, or three, three halves Boltzmann's constant times temperature is actually equal to half mv squared. So heat is kinetic energy. And so we're not gonna worry about heat particularly. We're gonna talk about the kinetic energy, but we're not gonna talk about the heat. Okay, so let's think about what's happening. Um, by the way, I've just fixed my terrible gamma sign. So, um, in essence, if we go ahead and assume all of these things, really all that's happening is that some of this mass, it's gonna stay mass, but some of it's gonna to turn to kinetic energy. So really, all that's all that's happening. Really what we're saying here, in essence, we're gonna have a change in mass, and that's gonna become EK. So into simple terms, really what's happening is we're just getting mass energy, energy that comes from the mass of something, and it's being converted into kinetic energy. That is really all that's happening. And of course, the two formulas that we need for this are E equals mc squared, which we know and love, and E equals one half mv squared. Okay, so remember our situation, we had our Actinium just sort of sat there hanging out, not moving, and there will be a change in mass. So let's state that as, uh, as, a, uh, as a change in energy terms. The energy of the mass is mc squared, but it's a change. So delta mc, mc squared is going to become, well, it's going to become one half mv squared. And we know all of these values. Um, if we expand it out and think about the actual situation, we're going to have delta m, and I might as well put this in, ac squared, so the, the change in mass of the actinium as it decays, becoming the one-half mass of the franzium, velocity of the franzium squared. But we have two things, don't we? We also have the alpha so I have to put that in as well, the kinetic energy of the alpha m, the alpha v of the alpha squared. So let's pause for a moment and think about what we're trying to find out and what we do already know. The question is given to us very, very precisely the mass of franzium. So we know the mass of franzium. Let's give that a little tick. That's a known value. We also know the mass of the alpha. That's also been that's a known value that's given to us on our data sheet. The velocity of the alpha was given to us in the question. 
And then in the, in the previous, in part B of this example, we calculated the recoil velocity of the Franzian. Okay, C is the speed of light. And so the one thing we don't know here is this change in mass. Well, that's the mass defect. It's the missing mass, the change in the mass. Um, and that's what we're going to find out. So let's go ahead and plug those numbers in and see what we get. Of course, um, what that's going to be is delta M is equal to one half MV squared plus one half mv squared divided by speed of light squared. So what do we get? We plug that all into our calculator. Uh, we're going to get one decimal two six. So three significant digits that matches uh, matches my given values up here. Uh, one decimal two six times 10 to the negative 30 kilograms. Very small amount, but we're talking about atomic nucleus, nuclei, so eh, not surprising. That is the amount of mass that disappears, changes, it's a defect. Where does it go? It becomes kinetic energy. All right, so for our second um, set of examples here, we are simply asked to balance these nuclear equations. Uh, in order to answer some questions. So, nice and easy, we've got indium-115. So let's write out what that, what that starts to look like. So I use my periodic table just to get the annotation, IN, for indium. And the, nu uh, the, the number of nucleons in this is 115. So that's the number of protons and neutrons combined. The atomic number is 49. Okay, so indium-115 undergoes a beta-negative decay. Okay, so it decays. We know there's going to be a beta-negative, in other words, an electron here. It's uh, asking, what is the da daughter nucleus? Well, conservation laws. Let's remember we've got conservation of charge and we've got conservation of nucleons. Conservation of charge is going to be interested in the number of protons, because each proton has one elementary charge, and we've, if we have 49 elementary charges to begin with, we better have 49 elementary charges afterwards, otherwise we've broken a conservation law, and we don't like to do that. So, to get 49, we have to account for this negative 1. So we have a negative 1 plus a number that means that we don't violate the conservation of charge. Well, pretty clear you can see this is going to be 50. 50 plus a negative 1 is equal to 49. Um, and that's our conservation of charge rule. So 49 is equal to a negative 1 plus a 50. Okay, so now we need to look at our periodic table and figure out what the heck that is. And so it'd be right next to indium. And sure enough, there you can see on your periodic table the... the uh, annotation SN, and that, of course, is tin. So let's just make a note of this. We are producing tin. Well, not producing. It's decaying into tin. Last thing to do is just take care of these nucleons, because, again, we can't violate that conservation law. 115 is what we have to begin with. We've got a zero, and so hopefully you can see this is also going to be a 115 in order to keep that number the same before and after. So we're, we're, this is decaying indium-115, decays to tin-115. Um, should mention as well, uh, especially if you're in IB, you're going to want to take care of another conservation law. Um, if you're not in IB, then you, you just need to memorize that whenever you produce a beta negative, you're also going to get a neutrino. And the memorization bit is that if you produce, if you're getting a, a regular old beta negative, this is essentially just a normal electron, normal, nothing weird about it, then to balance the normalness of this electron, you need a weirdness, and that's going to be an anti-neutrino. Uh, neutrinos have zero charge and zero mass, essentially. I mean, they do a little bit, but we pretty much ignore it. So that's going to be there. If you're in 
IB, the conservation law is the lepton number. So if you run IB, it's really quite simple. You're just going to keep track of the lepton number. So lepton number is going to be zero to start with because there are no leptons. And then you end up with, well, a, an electron is a normal type of electron. So this actually has a positive one lepton number. Um, tin will have a zero because it's not a lepton. So let's just do this. So there's our, there's our electron plus zero for the tin. And to get us back to zero, we are going to need a negative, negative one. And that's where the anti-neutrino comes in because the anti-neutrino anti has a lepton number of negative one. That's just if you're in IB. If you're in regular physics 30, don't worry about that. Just memorize that whenever you have an a beta negative, you must have the anti-neutrino. And guess what? If you have a beta positive, it's the regular neutrino. And that's because, of course, beta, beta positives have a negative lepton number. So this would have to be a positive, which is the regular neutrino. Anyway, um, other things to note, just to be super diligent, um, we've got a beta negative decay, which means this daughter nucleus is probably in an excited state and it's going to drop down in excited uh, it's going to drop down an excited level, and that's probably going to emit a gamma photon. So we can put a gamma photon in here as well, but we're basically going to ignore that for now. All right, for, for B, we have nobelium, 255, decaying to, well, it's telling us it's fermium, but which one? So let's go ahead and do our analysis. Nobelium is, if you look it up on your periodic table, NO, and the um, number of nucleons is 255. It's going to decay. Well, we're already told it's going to decay to, uh, to fermium, which is FM, and we need to know which one it's going to do. Well, if we keep track of the number of nucleons, we kind of get stuck. So Let's go ahead and fill out the rest of this. Uh, nobelium, if, again, if you look at the atomic number from your periodic table, is 102. And fermium, if you look at the periodic table, well, fermium has an atomic number of 100. So hopefully you can see that this 100, sorry, this 102 has to become a 100, but we must maintain the total number of elementary charges. So if we have 102 elementary charges on the left of the equation, we must also have 102 on the right, which means there is going to be two extra here. And that's a clue because now we can think of what, what type of nuclear decay is going to give us a two uh, elementary charge well, or two protons. Well, that's going to be an alpha particle, isn't it? So there's our alpha particle. And alpha particles are going to have two protons and two neutrons. So they're going to have a nucleon number of four. Okay, so now we keep track of these nucleon numbers. 255 turns into, well, some other number for fermium plus the four. So 255 minus the four gives us 251. So we've essentially answered the question, what isotope of fermium? It's fermium-251. Okay. Um, in this case, if we just keep track of, well, we're also going to think of this excited atomic state. So very likely there's going to be uh, a gamma, but we'll ignore that. It's sort of insignificant at this point. There's nothing, nothing being asked of that. In terms of IB, if you're looking at lepton numbers, Nothing to report here. We've got a lepton number of zero, lepton number of zero, and a lepton number of zero. So really very boring in terms of leptons. So that's it. Okay, our last example um, for this uh, lesson is uh, we're told there's a parent nucleus that undergoes, oh, sorry, a parent isotope that undergoes a beta positive decay and the daughter is nitrogen 11. So we have something decaying to nitrogen 
11. So it looks like this. Atomic number of nitrogen is 7. So it's decaying. So there must be something else. Oh, we're told about that. It's beta positive. So beta positive, it's a plus 1 with no uh, significant mass. So let's go ahead and do our conservation laws. Well, we've got 7 and a 1. So we've got a, an, an, uh, an elementary charge of 8 which means over here, whatever this was, must also be an, uh, there must also be eight elementary charges. In other words, eight protons. And again, looking at our periodic table, eight is the atomic number. And oops, I was gonna draw an eight. What I really meant to do was do a zero, uh, an O, because this is oxygen. Okay, now let's keep track of our nucleons. We've got 11 and zero, so, the isotope number for our oxygen is therefore going to be 11. Okay, now we got to keep going because for physics 30, we have to think of um, whenever there's a beta particle produced in radioactive decay, <clears throat> there will be a neutrino. The question is whether it's an anti-neutrino or just a regular neutrino. And again, you're just going to have to memorize this. If it's a beta negative, which is normal matter, you're going to get an antimatter neutrino, an, an, uh, an anti neutrino. In this case, we have a positron, which is a positive electron, that is an anti particle version of an electron. So, since we have an anti electron, we need to have a regular neutrino. So, if you're physics 30, you just need to memorize oops, not a very good neutrino sign that we're going to have a regular neutrino. Um, we'll do the leptons in a second for you IB folk. Um, also, just to be just to be really diligent, we're also going to have very likely going to have a gamma, because we're going to have this once again when you have a, a beta or an alpha or beta decay. It's very likely that this daughter nucleus will be in an excited state, and therefore will be it will lower down to a less excited state in a very short period of time. Um, like a picosecond speed. So this will drop down to a lower energy and in doing so it will release a photon. It's very likely to happen. So I'm just going to put that in there just to be extra diligent. Um, back to our leptons. Well, if you're in IB, you've got to keep track of these. So lepton number, well, regular, regular isotopes don't have any leptons. So zero, zero. So zero becomes a zero plus, well, this is where we take care of our beta positive. Beta positive is antimatter. So this has a negative one lepton number. Okay, so we're in the negative ones. And that's why the neutrino has to be a regular old matter neutrino, which has a lepton number of plus one. Okay, so plus one, plus a negative one gives you the zero. Oh, I suppose you could do it for a photon as well, which also has a zero lepton number. Okay, that's us for this lesson. See you next time.